In this video, I'm going to show you the pottery wheel I started with and the pottery wheel I built. So I thought it might be helpful to show you my first pottery wheel so you can understand some of the issues I wanted to address when I built my own. This is a Speedball Artista, probably one of the most inexpensive wheels you can get. And Actually, when I first got this, I did not have my heart set on getting an inexpensive wheel. I really felt like the best way to go was to get something used. I looked for months on Craigslist. I couldn't find something that I was going to be happy with. I wanted a wheel right now, so I jumped on Amazon and I got this for a little less than $500, $480, something like that. And it was fine. I didn't know any better either because I had never had a wheel before. Years and years ago, I had touched a wheel in high school, but just that. Um, nothing but YouTube and knowing that this is something I wanted to do. So I got this in the mail and got it out to um, the house and started using it. And right away I realized, man, there are a couple things in this wheel that are just really going to bug me. To start with, I didn't get the foot pedal right away. I wasn't sure I was going to need that. Um, while you're throwing and learning and you start to lose that pot and you need to take a hand off and reach down to this knob on the side to change the speed, turn it down, turn it off, really hard to do. So right away it became apparent, uh, to me at least, a foot pedal was just not an option. It was something that was a necessity, you had to have it. What I didn't realize on this wheel though is that there's no way to switch between a foot pedal and the side knob. So it's actually built into the jack here. When you plug in your foot pedal, it implicitly disconnects this knob, which is fine. But the way it's wired, every time you unplug or plug in this foot pedal, the wheel jumps. So, why does that matter? Well, in my case, when I got my, my uh, pedal, it didn't work right out of the box. I didn't know that, uh, but it wouldn't stop the wheel. And I thought, well, maybe that's, maybe that's how it's supposed to be. I don't know. And eventually, I mean, like six months, seven months later, I eventually did call Speedball, which was really my first mistake. I should have called them right away. And I asked him, hey, is this, is this how it's supposed to be? Is, shouldn't this stop the wheel or, or what? Oh, no, no. They said, that, that's not how it should work. You, you should definitely be able to stop the wheel. And they told me about how to open this up. And there's some gears that might have jumped a tooth. And you can reset these things. And so I got it to work. It didn't deal with the jumping issue, and it would be an issue because you would go to plug in the foot pedal not realizing that the power wasn't off, it was just turned all the way down, you, you're, you have something on here, you're trimming something, and it'll kick the wheel and they'll certainly throw it on the ground. I, I can't tell you how many, pots I, how many pots I threw on the ground, it was really frustrating. But so, that was kind of my first issue. I want to be able to have a foot pedal, I want to have a side knob, I want to be able to switch between them smoothly. This wheel does not have a reverse. That's not a huge thing. I rarely use reverse. Uh, maybe for certain types of chatter or certain types of tools I'll find myself spinning it backwards, but I knew that if I built a wheel having a reverse feature would be nice. Uh, in addition, this wheel head is not removable. That's fine. That's fine. Let me show you this. The biggest issue I had with this wheel, and in fact, I have two of these wheels because the first one had a warranty issue. So just under a year, the wobble in this wheel head started getting so bad that it was almost impossible to throw anything on. And I looked and uh, wanted to see the bearings and see if I can replace them, and there are no bearings in these. Um, there are bushings, and when they wear out, they get loose, and in my case, the bushing actually seized onto the shaft and started spinning with the wheel in the plastic housing. I took a little video of it, and I sent it to Speedball and said, hey, you know, what, what do I do? And they said, we can't, you can't fix it. You're going to have, we'll have to send you a new one. And after a little bit of talking, I said, hey, you know, if you're going to throw this away, why am I going to ship this back to you? Can I keep it and see if I can fix it? And I, I took it apart and I took it over to the machine shop uh, in the other building and bored it out and put it in a new bushing and got it to work. But I realized, you know, this is, this is almost a $500 purchase and the idea that everything, 
the wheel, the motor, the speed control, the drip pan, the whole enclosure, everything would have to be thrown away if this bushing wore out again. And the bushing, I think, cost $2, 250 or something. It was really cheap. Not much to it, but you can't service it. And I thought that was a real disappointment. I wanted something that I could use for literally decades. I could sell as an old man to someone else who wants a pottery wheel and they could easily take it apart and clean it and all the parts would be ubiquitous. You should be able to find them from multiple suppliers without having to contact the original manufacturer. That's not unreasonable to expect. So that was one of the things I set my mind to do. I wanted a detachable wheel head. I also wanted a wheel head made out of metal. This wheel head is of some sort of composite. Just about everything on the wheel is composite. The pulleys are some sort of plastic, ABS or, I don't know, glass fiber reinforced nylon. I'm not sure. But I wanted a metal head so I didn't have to worry whether I put a torch on it or not, whether I was going to damage it. I wanted to show you in case you're thinking, hey, there is no way that that wheel head is plastic. I actually, when I first got it, I didn't think it was plastic. I didn't even think about it. it didn't even occur to me that it could be plastic. I'm sure it was some sort of metal. But let me show you. I have a razor blade. See how I'm biting into that thing? Plastic. And in fact, when you run the blade into it, you can hear kind of a, a grittiness, which tells me that there's some sort of fiber reinforcement in it. It is clearly a composite, though. It is not a, a metal wheel head in any way. Again, switching between the two speed controls, I want more power than what this little wheel had. And I don't fault this wheel for that. It's a small, inexpensive wheel, uh, but you can grab this wheel and, and stop it with your hands, at least I can. And I realized that you know if you're going to be putting a large amount of clay on this, you're going to need a little bit more power. So those were some of the issues I was dealing with and what I wanted to address when I built my pottery wheel. I think it's worth saying Building a pottery wheel, like many projects, is, is probably not for everybody. And I'm not necessarily convinced that the money you save is, is worth it, unless you really enjoy the creative process of designing and making and building something yourself. I happen to. I, I look forward to making my own wheel. It took me some time. Uh, but in the end, I, I want to say my wheel cost hmm, probably $700, $650, $700. And, and quite a bit of labor and I'm really happy with it. It's the type of work I enjoy. I like figuring these things out. But if you don't have access to tooling and you're going to have to hire professionals to do any portion, if you have to hire a machine shop to do machining of certain parts or welding and you don't have a friend or family member who has those capabilities, then then you might find trying to build a uh, what I would consider a professional grade pottery wheel difficult and it may not make sense. You might want to just save your money and write the check for an extra five or six hundred dollars and get something done made by people who've been making them for years. Uh, in my case, I chose not to do that, but largely because I enjoy making these things. So just keep that in mind. So the first thing you'll notice is that I don't have any of the electronics on the on the pottery wheel itself, and that's not so much to keep the water out of them although that's certainly the case as well, but because I like the idea of having the controls up and close at hand where I don't have to reach over and reach down and uh, try to hit controls that I can't see quite too well, uh, being that they're low or around the side. So having them up mounted on, a, on this case on the, on the countertop just seemed to be the way to go. And so far I'm really happy with it. So I have almost all the wiring disconnected at this point. I'll explain what this is. Uh, that's related to this RPM screen. You normally don't see RPM gauges on a pottery wheel, but uh, I thought it would be interesting. Turns out it's not that helpful. So uh, beyond this, this is kind of a last minute addition. Everything else is quick release. So when I'm cleaning like this, I can take and remove all the wiring. And you can see this is what we got. So we have a speed control and I'll pull the numbers on that and tell you about that. Uh, the reason that this case is so big, it certainly doesn't need to be this big, is because I was I tried several different speed controls and some are quite large. I'm really happy with this one. And I'm not sure if you think this looks like too much, but it's really quite easy. These speed controls have the opportunity for a potentiometer. It does not know that I wanted 
two potentiometers though. I wanted this one so I can uh, set a speed and just leave it at the speed or if I want actually in this case with this switch being up uh, it functions on this knob but I can flip this switch down and it uh, disconnects this potentiometer and I have a plug for uh, foot pedal so we have a foot pedal this plugs in here obviously with this closed this is an original speedball uh, I, I bought it for an Artista wheel. I did reuse it for this project. I had to open it up. I had to rewire it. Uh, I didn't care for the two-wire system that it used. I, I went to a standard three-wire system. And then, of course, it just has the jack right there. Power from the wall comes in. You see these on computers. In a I'm not sure what this plug is called, but it's a standard quick disconnect for uh, a power plug to plug it in the wall. And then to get the power to the wheel, I use these plugs. Power con, I believe they're intended for power situations uh, like on a stage with amps and microphones and that sort of things. It's a quick, it's a twist kind of lock and it's color coded, can't screw it up. Let me show you how those pop in. So here's the input on the pottery wheel and you can see there's a nice positive tight connection. One of the things I wanted on this pottery wheel was a wheel that would disconnect, a wheel head that I could take off without any tools. And so I have a very accurately bored hole here. You can see it's a little rocky where I have it on the concrete right now, but it's not normally the case. And then I have a, a drive pin, like a key, that I've installed in the shaft. And you'll see here, if you're wondering, what the heck is that? Uh, I cast this aluminum myself. I took an old ladder, melted it down, made the wheel head out of a foam model, styrofoam, buried it in sand, poured the aluminum in, and then held it on a lathe and faced it off and came around the back, came into here. Probably the most interesting part of this is inside. So give me a second. Let me flip this over. I'll open it up and I'll show you how it goes together. So this piece was a little tricky. This is also cast. You can see some of my uh, voids in my casting. But the difficulty was if this pipe was a little bit bigger, I wouldn't need that adapter. But this pipe does not clear these ears. And so it does not touch directly to that aluminum plate. And I needed something that could cover those ears and give me a uh, something to pinch against up against the body of the the wheel. Right. So you can see the deal here. So I made a, a wooden ring and a walnut. The inside doesn't have to be beautiful, but it's all drilled for holes and clearance where needed. And you can see this is the main attachment for the for the motor. This motor came with a foot, but this is called a C face. They come in different they come in different sizes. 56C frame. And this is a face mount. So the only thing that's critical is the size of this hole. Secondarily, the the four bolts, but the motor references on this ring right here. So that's what holds the motor onto the unit. So you can see where this is where the foot was on the motor. And when you take it off, there's two bolt holes. And so I simply weld it up this kind of popsicle stick that hooks over the edge. Uh, I did have to notch the fan shroud a little bit to clear it. But this is what pulls the whole thing down onto the tube and holds the whole thing together. Up top, we have a, a radial bearing here that's held down with this cage. There's no reason that this is toothed. 
uh, I did I did cut this aluminum piece here out of an aluminum plate with the CNC machine and put a little chamfer on it just just for fun but no real need to have it toothed like that but I have a bearing held in here and then a radial bearing uh, rather a radial bearing here and then a thrust bearing down in the bottom like a little like a little lazy Susan that takes the end of the shaft so when you're slamming your clay down on it that that lower bearing is what takes the hit this is what it is There's one of these that's under this cap held in place here and then there's a second one on the top plate now these plates are half inch aluminum I, I, I don't recall what type of aluminum but I had uh, two leftover plates from when I made my CNC machine so that's what I used for the top and the bottom uh, simply cutting out this pattern and putting the holes in without tapping on the CNC machine and then I came back and hand tapped the holes where necessary and I blended all the edges in it's a it's for for a, well, it's called boat hoist you can see right here but I think it's for some sort of a sail thing it came actually this was intended to use on it as well it's a toothed belt but it came with the pulley intended for something else so I simply built the pottery wheel around it I get five to one reduction which means my top speed on this wheel is faster than than necessary it's a little over 400 rpm and you can see the other the other bearing is pressed into this top plate and this is a single shaft that goes all the way through so you can also see this is a one horsepower that's about the maximum you're going to get on a on a, something that you're not going to put 220 voltage into it's just standard 110, 115, uh, right out of the wall. So I have it all put back together and wired up. I thought I'd show you under power just how these simple controls work. I need to make some little labels on these, but you know I made it myself, so I, I know what they do. As I mentioned, red light means the box has power. Green light, my pedal was on. Green light means that there's power to the wheel. This is our forward and reverse and this is pedal control or knob control this piece right here is uh, there's probably several ways to do it I know that the old leech wheels had a Morse taper probably a number two Morse taper or it kind of had a cone shaped thing on the bottom of your wheel head and the friction of that cone is what kept it from spinning in my case I put a notch on this pipe and then of course I have the key I showed you on the bottom of the wheel head that engages but what it means is it doesn't unscrew and it, and it doesn't require any sort of tooling to remove it you just lift it off now I must admit I wasn't even sure I was going to show you this because it's dirty I kind of dusted it off it's been sitting up on a shelf I don't use it but it did not work bad in terms of catching slop because this is a you, you know you feed water and whatnot to farm animals pigs and sheep and things in pens uh, you could drive your car over it it will never break super strong felt really good about that the more I used it the more I realized I just didn't care for a splash pan I may change my mind over time but for now the splash pan hasn't been on this wheel and sometime I just wipe it down and it just keeps going so this is the speed control I would suggest you would get if this is something you wanted to do I'll let you see that KB Electronics has all sorts of different speed controls in fact they have so many that it can be kind of confusing but you can take this model number here and take a look regenerative drive is the key in this case and at about hundred and forty five dollars on Amazon or other other places uh, although that may sound expensive was quite a deal this is I believe the cheapest of the three drives I tried most expensive being around two hundred and eighty dollars but this one worked by far the best really happy with it one question you might have is, okay, where do I get all these things? Where do I get these switches? How do I know what I'm supposed to get? Where do I get these these LEDs? I would start with McMaster Car. They they have a great online catalog. You can find what you're looking for. Uh, they don't have bad prices, and their quality seems to be great on what they do sell. But look on there, and once you figure out what you want, then you can start looking around. For example the female receptacle to the power plug or the headphone jack or 
this one here, uh, this switch, which switches between the knob and the foot pedal, you're turning off and turning on several wires at the same time. This is called a dual pull, dual throw, DP, DT switch. But I wouldn't be too intimidated to go looking for these individual parts. One tip on the LED lights is look for LED lights. They come in different colors, uh, nice small indicators that run on 110 volts. As to the enclosure, look for a NEMA rated enclosure. Well, I hope that video was interesting and informative. If you have any questions about building your own pottery wheel, you're welcome to reach out to me. Thanks for watching.